In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the real-time generation feature in Leonardo AI. So when you go there, you can sign up, you'll get 150 free tokens, click on real-time generation, and what you do is while you're typing in the prompt, it'll actually generate it live. So like this, so I could say like a horse, okay, and then this is what I get, and I'll say running, and so then I get the horse running, and then I could say a horse with black and white spots running. Okay, cool, so I have that. And then I could say through a prayer, a prairie. Cool, so I have it uh, with tall grass. Cool, so there's tall grass with a cowboy on its back. Cool, so there's a cowboy now. And what I can do here is these elements, I guess you change those a little bit, and those will determine how the prompt actually changes. So if I turn this coloring book algorithm up, it modifies that a little bit. So now it looks just like straight up kind of like pencil sketch, right? If I take kids illustration down, right? You see, I get closer to a whole, like it just looks straight up like a drawing. But if I take coloring book down, and turn up like tune and anime it actually is going to make it look a little bit more kind of like it could you know just changes the style of it um i could say like the cowboy is shooting a rifle and i don't think it wants to do that one maybe because of guns or something like that so the cowboy is um waving a lasso so we can get him to wave a lasso and i'm gonna say right now a group of a group of horses with black and white spots are running with cowboys on cool so now we have a group of horses some with cowboys on their backs riding through a pair a prairie with tall grass and then the lasso thing didn't quite work out um but cool overall just a a, a really interesting example here so what we could do too is we can ask for different styles to be applied out of these so i'll show you kind of some of those so if i go to anime then we kind of get this this breakdown here so this will use like basically the anime primer apply it to the whole thing and then use these elements if i reset these this will kind of be what i get from by default if i say let me use like cinematic right this is more of what i get and if i change these you'll, you can kind of just see how these sort of work out overall if i turn these up a lot it's really cool what you can get because you can very much dynamically generate you know within a certain realm of style that you want if i change it to like painting get something maybe more like that if i do like sketch color that's pretty good but this horse is kind of combined looks like we can do vibrant cool let's try something different okay and we're going to do something kind of sci-fi this time so we'll say a futuristic Space ship flies through the atmosphere of Earth. Okay, cool. So we have that. So I can say um, something right here a highly detailed battle cruiser. Cool, so that makes it more like, kind of warlike. And if I change these, be interested to see what we get. Okay, that just looks like paper. Very interesting though, right? How you can change this. Um, these these different options right here create a, diff a lot of different things. Um, so this one, this style right here, this is really cool. But the spaceship does look a little bit wonky. Um, 
So I'm going to say triangular detailed futuristic spaceship battle cruiser flies through the atmosphere of Earth. So, right, so we got a better shape out of that one, right? But the ability to have this change so often, it just really kind of cuts to the core of, of what we're trying to do here. Let me reset that. I'm going to say a sword. With a golden lay, we can see if we can go to anime, cinematic. So many different options, right? So that one's pretty good. It's held by a samurai. So Samurai is holding a sword as he charges into battle. Very cool. And at any point in time, you can say, hey, let me upscale this. And then you'll go ahead and you'll get the actual image. So if I say creative upscale up here, boom, that'll upscale it. If I click here, it'll download it. So you can kind of get a bunch of different stuff created on the fly and you can modify it and you don't really have to wait for that generation time. So this one, I try to say a single sword. Now I'm just going to say katana. Really kind of change the style of the sword. It's held by a samurai as he charges into battle on horseback. Cool. We still kind of have the dual swords thing going on. Sometimes that happens but just keep on tweaking it and like this right here we have the horse has multiple legs now but when you upscale it you may get rid of that just sometimes that's what upscaling can help with okay so with this one I could say like a woman try to build a character here reading a book in a library Full of potted green plants. Cool. So, like the background of the library is, um, it's all green, right? So, a woman reading a book that she is holding. So, she's holding the book, and the plants are behind her, and she's in a library. And I could say, like, wide perspective so I mean we get a little bit zoomed out we could try to add a keyword like that I don't think that that one's really necessarily gonna work but if we change this it'll be interesting to see what we get as far as styles so we got sketch black and white maybe if I add a little bit here here so here you go, this is like fully a cartoon. I'm gonna upscale that. When I go to my personal feed, I'll be able to see that. And so here's an upscale representation of one of the real-time images that I generated. So, you know, if you wanted to go for a certain style and then you wanted to make, you know, a representation of this character, like looking left, looking right, um, you could do a lot of really cool things with that. And you could quickly do, you know, storytelling with this type of thing and you could keep the styles consistent so what i could do for the storytelling aspect is i could say she's finding a book that she's uh looking in a bookshelf for so she's looking in a bookshelf for a book um i could change some things about her perspective so she's she's looking for the book right um, and then I could say uh, a woman walking into a library full of potted green plants, right? And so this is kind of the same woman. And I could say like a woman with brown hair and a green dress walking into a library full of potted green plants. I could say walking out of a library 
And I can even just say, walking down the street, holding a book. So, in her arms. So she's holding a book in her arms. She w just went to the library, got a book, and we could have taken, at every point in time in the story, we could have taken a snapshot of that, upscaled it, and then used that to tell our story. And with this, I could even say making a cup of tea in her cozy home. I could even say there is a book sitting on the table next to the tea. I could even say a stack of books. And then, you know, I just kind of have to tweak this to generate where the books are. And we don't really have the books here, but they're on the shelf, right? So it kind of just like lends to the story of like, okay, yeah, she went and got a book. She's walking down the street with the book. Then we take these different scenes as we like them. And this character is, is sort of consistent, right? And we can... Um, we can use this to kind of formulate exactly what we're looking for. And then we only have to spend tokens whenever we're trying to upscale those images. So overall, I think this is a really exciting feature. I think this is one of the coolest ways you can interact with image prompts. And I just really think you guys should go check it out. It doesn't cost anything. And if this video was helpful to you, go ahead and throw a like, subscribe for more stuff like this, and drop any thoughts you have in the comments.